All right, welcome back. We're looking at the same crankshaft as the last video and also going to apply relative motion analysis to it to find out what the velocity of point C is. But this time we're going to do what's called a scalar analysis. It's a little bit simplified, sort of, from uh, compared to the vector analysis, but it's also very, very similar as they both are relative motion. So if you did watch the last video, I talked a little bit more about the mechanics of how this works. And then in this one, we'll just be going through basically all the same steps up until the point where they deviate from each other. But if you want to watch it, I'll put a link to it up in the top right corner. And so you can check out that video if you want. But otherwise, we'll continue on, assuming that you've seen the basics of, of how this relative motion analysis works. So to get started, it's easiest if we identify all of the angles inside our triangle. So if we look at this angle here first, we'll call this alpha. And same as last time, we're going to use the sine law to find out that it's equal to sine 30 over 0 0.5, which is equal to sine alpha over 0 0.2. And we can just rearrange for alpha to get that it is equal to 11.537 degrees. If we label this one as gamma, we can just take the sum of all of the interior angles, 30, or have 180 degrees minus 30 minus 11.537. And that's going to give us gamma, which is equal to 138.463 degrees. You can actually get away with not calculating this one, but you'll see in the next few videos on the different methods that we will need it. So it's not a bad habit to just calculate all of them if you have the time. Okay, so to get started, we want to find the velocity of point B, it's absolute velocity, and that is equal to the tangential velocity of B as it travels around in this rotation around A, as it's limited by this, this crank here. So we can draw it on perpendicular to the, the member AB. And same as the last video, this is the velocity of B. It is just equal to omega AB times RAB. RAB being the, the length, the position vector here the length of the position vector from A to B, which is 0 0.2, and we know the angular velocity of AB as 25 radians per second. So we can just fill that out. We have 25 radians per second times 0 0.2 meters, and that gives us VB is equal to five meters per second. And same as the last video, if we want to find out what the angle is, which is good to have. We can draw in here from the horizontal like this. We know that this angle is 30, which makes this one 30. And because this is 90 here, that makes this angle 60. So we can indicate that, that it is coming off the horizontal clockwise at 60 degrees. It's also good right now to identify the X and Y components of this velocity. So if we draw them on, let's pick a different color. Let's do red. If we call this V, bx and vby. If vb was five meters per second, then vby, because this angle in here is 60, it just makes this five meters times the sine of 60, which is 4.33. And vbx down here is just five meters times the cos of 60, which is a little bit tight in here. Let's maybe just maybe bring the label over here. So we have vbx. Uh, that works out to being negative 2.5 meters per second. It is negative because it is going to the left if we define the right as the positive x direction and up as the positive y direction. Okay, so the next thing to do is to try to identify what the, the rotational sense of member BC is. If we can look at point B here, as it's going to rotate up like this about point A, it's lifting, it's going up and to the left, as we have point C moving like this. And if you can imagine that, you could even put your pencil on the page and try to rotate it as if it was doing that motion. You're gonna see that it's rotating in a clockwise fashion. So that's good to label on here as omega BC. So if we know the absolute velocity of point B, which is five meters per second, it is the tangential velocity of point B. And because that pin is connected to A, B, and BC, then it's the absolute velocity of point B, whether we're looking at either member, is five meters per second off like that, 60 degrees up from the horizontal. Now, knowing that that's the absolute velocity, we can write the expression for VC, which is just the velocity of C is equal to the velocity of B plus the velocity of C with respect to B. And what this is saying is that the absolute velocity of C is equal to the absolute velocity of B plus the relative velocity of C as you know, from the perspective of point B. 
Now if we look at member BC, the relative velocity of C with respect to B, it has to be moving basically perpendicular to the axis of this member because this member is not changing in length. There's no way for C to basically move directly towards B or directly away from B at this point. From the perspective of point B, it has to move either downwards or upwards in a circular path basically about point B at this exact moment in time. And because we know that the, the member is rotating like this, then the actual relative motion will be going down to the right in order to match that clockwise sense of rotation about point B. So we can draw it on tangential, just like that, that 90 degrees from the axis of the member. And this is the velocity of C with respect to B. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we wanna take the expression for the velocity of C and split it into its X and Y components. So we have the X component of the velocity of C is equal to the X component of the velocity of B plus the X component of the velocity of C with respect to B. And then we also have the Y component of the velocity of C is equal to the Y component of the velocity of B plus the Y component of the relative velocity of C with respect to B. Now we already know some of these values. We already calculated VBX right here to be negative 2.5 meters per second. And we also know VBY was 4.33 meters per second. Also by inspection, we can see that VC must, its entire velocity must be directed to the left in the, the X direction. So VCY is going to be equal to zero and VCX is going to be equal to the actual velocity of C. So we can simplify these a little bit. This will be VC is equal to negative 2.5 plus VC with respect to BX. And then we have zero is equal to 4.33 plus VC with respect to BY. We can simplify this one and we're gonna see that the Y component of the relative velocity of C with respect to B is equal to negative 4.33 meters per second. And this negative sign just indicates that it is in the downward direction and by inspection here, we see that its Y component would definitely be in the downward direction because its X component would be coming out like this and the Y component down like that for the vector addition. So that is VC with respect to BY. And this is VC with respect to BX. It's actually a coincidence that I drew these at the exact same size. It did not, won't necessarily be exactly the same shape or size as VC. So don't get those two mixed up. And if you look here, this 90 degrees was actually off of the axis of the member. So let's try to highlight that a little bit better, like that. Um, which means if this angle alpha right in here was 11.537, then it means the remaining angle right here is 90 minus 11.537, which is equal to 78.463 degrees. And that leaves this as the 90 degree angle in this right angle triangle. So if we want to calculate for this side, this is just from the perspective of the angle is the adjacent side. This is the opposite side. And we can relate those with uh, 10. So we just have 10 of 78.463 is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we have 4.33 over VCB x and we can just rearrange that to find that vcb x is equal to 0 0.884 meters per second now that is going to the left so when we plug this in right here we have to consider it to be a negative value because it's going opposite what we have for the positive x direction it just showed up as a positive value here because we inputted positive values in the triangle but when we plug that in, we have VC is equal to negative 2.5 minus 0 0.884. And we're gonna find that VC is equal to negative 3.384, that's meters per second. But ultimately VC is just equal to 3.38 meters per second to the left. Which is exactly what we got in the last video using relative motion analysis, but with vectors. Um, just wanted to show that you can use a scalar analysis if you prefer, if you don't want to do the vector cross product, but just be aware that there is a few slight differences along the way. Okay, cool. Um, that's it for this one. And join me in the next video and we'll go through this exact same problem of this crankshaft using the method of instantaneous center of zero velocity.